This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at the Bergenland District. But before that, this video is brought to you by Optimus and Lawrence Anderson. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Bergenland District map can be found at the farming simulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the one point release, this map is available for PC players, PlayStation 5, and the Xbox Series X and S. What are excluded from those console platforms are the old consoles. This map does not appear to be released for PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. Let's read a little bit of the description. Welcome to the Bergenland district. This map is within a region of Germany. This map includes two real villages and a fictitious commercial area. The map includes 67 fields and meadows, 19 forest areas, and the map has game cartridges from Holt Betharoon as the collectibles. At the first village, we have a cow and chicken farm. We have a chicken and bee farm. We also have a pig and cow farm. We have a workshop and graze, grain storage area. Then there are multiple animal pens and productions scattered around the village. Within that village, we also have furniture making, a couple construction sites, a tailor, as well as a spinnery, and then we have a sawmill. Over at the second village, we have a cow and pig farm. We have a sheep farm, which includes fabric production. We have a timbering area as well as a pig fattening area. We also then have a bakery, sugar factory, and multiple other things going on up at the second village. The map also includes a industrial park, a solar park, and two more building areas. We have custom production on the map where we can create motor oil. We can create chocolate milk and strawberry milk. We also have the ability to make cement. Now the map author suggests the more trees mod by KR Softwares, as well as Applied Expansion and Precision Farming DLCs from Giants. There is also a very, very stern warning related to this map because it has two variants. Right now we see the single player variant, but we also have a multiplayer variant. If you are gonna be playing this in single player, by all means, only use the single player variant when you load this map up for the very first time. The reason is if you set up the multiplayer variant in a single player, there will be things orphaned on the map that you will have no access to. For example, in multiplayer, and we're gonna see this here in a little bit. Multiplayer has seven farms pre-configured with different equipment for each farm already at the various farm areas. If you load the multiplayer up into single player, it does not smash all that equipment down into your farm. While the equipment looks to be owned by you, you still can't enter it even if you own the land that it's on because the coding did not transfer correctly. So if you're gonna be playing this map in single player, make sure you only pick the single player variant. If you do wanna play this map on a dedicated server or on a local hosted multiplayer session, then by all means, you can pick the multiplayer variant when you load that session up, and then you'll be able to pick one of seven predefined farms that are already set up with various starting machinery. We're gonna go ahead and look at both modes, but we are gonna load up the single player variant first. Now we are gonna use the mods we typically use when we take a look at map set as additional field info, additional game settings, field lease, field calculator, and precision farming. And in addition to that map, we have 18 required mods. Now on the Giants Mod Hub page, there are 16 listed, but there are actually two more. I wanna call those out so that those trying to load this map up in multiplayer will know why your game is not starting. And the server log will not tell you what two mods are missing. It just says mods are missing. Good luck. So we also need the cow shed pack and the pack of small buildings. So the total list of required mods include the bale and vehicle shelter, Bavarian farm pack, building for colony, 
And we have concrete fences and gates. Cow shed package. This is one of the two that's not listed on the website. Franconian farm buildings, grain storages pack, GDR building package. We also have a half timbered barn. We had a Hessen farm. We had the medium sized warehouse, the old pig fattening barn, pack of small buildings. That is the second required mod that is not listed here on the website. We have the placeable building pack as well as the placeable vehicles pack. We have the riding hall, stone walls, universal porch roof. And that is going to consist of all of the required mods specific to loading this map up. I will tell you, if you load this map up in single player and in farm manager or start from scratch, you will find that the farms are built out exactly how you see them here in new farmer mode. With the exception, the only thing you own at the start is a weight. That's right, you own a front weight at the start and that is it. You do not own any land, nor do you own any machinery other than that one front weight. Now I do want to address once again, the substantial list of required mods and explain to players why we are suddenly seeing these with respect to Farm Sim 22. Now in Farm Sim past, Farm Sim 19, Farm Sim 17, and before, we had on the Giants Mod Hub assets called prefabs. And then we also had various buildings starting in 19, really. We had very modest buildings in 17. But starting in 19, we had buildings, we had gate packs that you could buy and put down. And that's great. Those map authors, or those mod authors, I should say, of let's say a building pack or a gate pack or a fence pack. They might get 10,000, 20,000 downloads for that individual pack. I'm guessing not a giant number of downloads because of the focused nature of the pack. Well, map author comes along and decides that is the exact fence or gate that I want to use in my map. And the map happens to get, let's say, 300,000 downloads. But it's got... It's got my map, it's got my, it's got my fence pack in it. I'm not getting any credit for that guy's 300,000 downloads. He used my fence pack, right? So in FS22, what Giants is attempting to do is give the guys credit. Credit is due where credit is due. I mean, yeah. So all of these required mods are required because the map author here has used them within his map. And in order to make sure that everyone gets full credit for their work, then when you download this map, you're gonna to have to download 18 additional mods if you don't already have them. So going back to our example, the guy who did the fence or gate pack that had at the start just 20,000, 30,000 downloads. Well, he'll now have 30,000, 330,000 downloads because now, Everyone has had to download his mod in order to get access to that map because not every map author has the ability to use Blender and create their own models. So they're leveraging the vast library of buildings and assets that we already have in the mod hub to help them make their own creations. And everybody should get credit for all of their work. So that is how it's working. And that's why we see a lot of maps now with all these required mods where in the past he may have used all 18 of these various mods within his map but every download for the map only goes credit for him now every download for the map also gives these guys credit themselves because credit is deserved where credit is due now let's go ahead and take a look at the pda this is quite an interesting map, and I spent probably about an hour and a half to two hours exploring this map and understanding it in both single player and multiplayer. It was a little difficult for me because we've got lots of things that are color coded. And well, as you all know, I do play with the colorblind mode enabled because some of these colors I find quite difficult to really pick apart. Now over here on the side, we do have kind of a listing 
of much more than simply seven areas. But we do have listed out all of the seven farms or areas that are defined in the multiplayer variant of this map, as well as some additional areas. And each specific area is going to correspond usually with a color coded area here on the PDA. And in multiplayer, typically those colored areas are going to correspond with areas that are owned by that one particular farm. Now in single player, we happen to own farmland ID 79, farmland ID 1, 25, 15, and 6. In addition to that, there is a BGA down here at farmland 87. Then we have several other areas that I kind of want to call out. I'm going to call this farmland one or farm number one, area 79. In multiplayer, we also have farm number two, which is at area 81, which is right here. We have farm number three, and that can be bought for $60,000. Farm three is area 80, just located right here, which is $84,000. Farm 84 is area 82 and 89. So that is this area here for $213,000, as well as $200,000. They're basically set up as a contractor. Farm number five is set up at farmland ID 96. That is right there. They can be bought for $154,000. Farm number six is farmland ID 97. And that can be bought for $179,000. Then farmland ID seven is 112, which is $49,000. In addition to those pre-built farms, and those are the seven farms that are in multiplayer, we also have a horse area here at farmland ID 94 and 103. We also have greenhouses that are available over here at farmland ID 84. Looking at my notes. And identify where 84 is. That is right there. We have cow area at farmland ID 85 and 86. They are here and here respectively. We have a solar yard up here at farmland ID 101. $200,000, but I sure as hell hope that we're going to get some money back from that investment. We have buildable yards at farmland 98 and 99. We also have a pallet warehouse at farmland ID 100. And then we have a pig fattening yard here at farmland ID 95. So like I said, quite a bit going on here on this map. And we haven't even got to half of these other areas. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. So the farmland lease screen shows, shows all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included, then ultimately how much is that farmland going to cost us? You see, we have quite the substantial list of farmlands here. A lot of them aren't overly big. So we do have some kind of modest size fields as well. And speaking of fields, we will be taking a look at our field calculator screen. And we use that particular mod to help us see exactly how big each particular field is. So you can see here we have field one, which is 0.42 hectares, field six, 1.26, field 15, 2.38, and field 25, 1.36. Got a fair number of fields that are less than one hectare in size, but then we got some pretty big fields, field 13 and field 14, or 12 and 19 respectively. Field 23 and 24, 15 and 14 respectively. And then right below that, field 26 is less than one, field 28 is 0.2. And then we can cross reference our field numbers here on this screen with our farmland lease farmland numbers and see how much any one particular farmland is going to cost us. Now, this map is making use of the generic soil map that is a part of the precision farming mod. Let's go and see how that soil map is being applied to these fields. As you can see, kind of toward the middle of the map, we have our typical loam, sandy loam, and loamy sand. Then off to the west, north, and east, we've got large patches of silty clay kind of surrounded by loam. Taking a look at our crop counter, we do have the standard base game crop counter available to us in Farm Sim 22. And one thing, I want to go back here. 
One thing that we are going to notice is we are missing a couple crops specific to Farm Sim 22's default crops. This map is missing sugarcane and cotton. They have been explicitly removed from the map. They're not going to be the available to plant at all. And as such, we are also not seeing them here on the crop calendar. Now, taking a look at our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of the crops that are included within the map itself. You will notice that cotton and sugarcane do not have any sell points, but again, they have been explicitly removed from the map itself. It's kind of interesting they're still showing up here in the prices screen, but nonetheless, we're not going to deduct any points because we cannot grow those crops. They have been phys physically removed from the map fill types. We do have the ability to sell our eggs, wool, and milk, as well as our silage, hay, straw, and grass. Now, if we take a look down through our production items, you will see we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items as well. In addition, we do have the ability to buy bulk lime, and we also have multiple places to get rid of our stones. We also have custom production. As I mentioned earlier, we have cement bag pallets. We have engine oil pallets. We have chocolate milk and strawberry milk pallets. We have a regular milk. We have food pallets. We have bread pallets. We have non-food and pallet one and two. We have OG pallets. I'll have to admit, I don't really understand what those are. And then with respect to the platinum expansion, while the description said, we re highly recommend the platinum expansion. We do not have the ability to sell most of the platinum expansion, but we do have the ability to process a couple of our kind of sawmill based platinum expansion items like long planks and prefab walls, as well as wooden beams. Now, if you are playing with pumps and hoses, you will need to find some way of making use of your separated manure because we do not have the ability to sell it at the start. In a single player mode, we do have a decent list of starting equipment. And we're going to run down through the starting equipment here in a little bit. It is all owned. None of it is leased. Some of it does have a fair bit of operating hours. So therefore, you're not going to get top dollar if you're looking to sell. We do have various animal areas pre-configured on the map. And a lot of these are at various other farms other than the farmland that we start. Here we do have contracts available. And we do not own any production chains. And we do have the 20 game cartridge collectibles. Now, earlier we started here in the garage. And there was a wanted map. You may have saw that as I was talking about the required mods. This is going to be your legend as to where you're going to find all 20 of the game cartridge collectibles. So when you are looking for your collectibles, you can come in here, study the map. Look for the little red circles and then basically go out on your hunt and uh, see if you can find all 20. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet in single player. Then we're going to rewind. We're going to load the map up in multiplayer and run through each of the seven farms where they are what the starting equipment is on all seven because it is very different than the starting machinery here on just one farm. Then also what land you're supposed to have and how much money you start with. So taking a look in single player, we start out owning the Kloss Arion 610 small tractor, the Axion 830 medium tractor, the Topliner 4090H harvester header, our 4090H harvester as well as the 4090H header and as well as the 4090H header trailer. We have the Brantner Z18051-2 XSL PowerFlex trailers. We have a pair of those. We have the Agrimaz POV 5XL plow as well as the Samgard 9500K cultivator. We have the Kuhn HR4040 power harrow and that is paired up with the Venta 4030 cedar. We have the Presia 4500 2C Super Planter. We have the Mega 1200L Fertilizer and Herbicide Sprayer. We have the Amazon ZATS 3200 Fertilize Spreader. We also have the Super Sys 800 Slurry Tank 
slurry spreader. We have a GMD 4411 side mower as well as a GMD 3123F front mower. We have a GF 8712 tether as well as the Samez Z2840H wind rower. We have the Ponger Impress 125F Pro baler. We have then the RA142 TMR mixer. We have the MSS3000 silage leveler. We have the Dusseldorf, at least that's how we're going to pronounce it, 3000 silo compaction roller. We have the Kloss FL140 front loader arms. For our front loader, we have a fork grapple, round bell fork, universal bucket, and manure fork. And then we ran it out with a 1500 and 900 kilogram front weight. With respect to mods and DLCs, we do have some custom equipment here on the map. We have a modified log fork that is also on the map. So with that, let me go ahead and load up the multiplayer variant. And then let's talk about the multiplayer maps or multiplayer farms that are pre-configured here on Bergenland District. Welcome back. We have now loaded the map up in multiplayer using a local hosted multiplayer session. And when we first jump into our escape menu, we're taken to our farms area. And you can see here we have now several predefined farms laid out. All I did was load this map up and we already have seven farm areas already laid out. And if we go ahead and take a look at our PDA itself, you will see now that we have various colored machinery kind of scattered all over the place. And that's because we start out owning machinery, at least each farm has machinery assigned to it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of iterate through each particular farm. I'm not even going to attempt, sorry, try to pronounce these farms. I'm just gonna number them one through seven. We are here at farm one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tab over real fast to farm one. Then we're gonna come up here to our PDA and we're gonna see basically where farm one is. This is the starting farmland in single player, farmland 79. So this can be bought for farm one for $133,000. We're just gonna go ahead and do that so everything can be coded up correctly. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet for farm one. Now you're basically gonna see it is the same as your single player starting equipment. So if you just ran through that, we're not gonna really run through that once again. So there you go for that. Now, in addition to that, we also have a chicken coop and a cow shed here at our starting farmland ID, or starting farm one. We're gonna do the farm tour when we get back over into single player. As far as farm two goes, go ahead and join that. And we'll tab over to that piece of farm machinery. And you're going to see that farm two, what's well, over here? And that is a farmland ID 81, as we mentioned earlier in the other video segment. Let's go ahead and buy that. You're going to see that we're going to get a chicken coop at farm two. And as far as our starting fleet for the second farm, with the Volter G105, we have a Nova 330 harvester. And it's paired up with the PowerStream 500 header, as well as the Nardi N40B header trailer. We have the John Deere XUV 865M Gator. We have the Welger DK 115 trailer. We have a pair of those. We have our Servo 25 plow. We have our Grabe EG39 cultivator. We have the Nordstein HK25 NS3030 seeder. We have the Hardy Mega 1200L sprayer. Then we have the Quickie 3M front loader arms. For the front loader, we have a pallet fork and universal bucket. Then we have a 650 kilogram front weight. Now, in addition, we are not going to be doing map tours at this point. We're going to do all of those back in the single player version of the game. Field, or should I say farm three, sorry. Farm three, let's go ahead and tab into that equipment. And you're gonna see that farm three is now located right here, kind of across the street from farm two. That is farmland ID 80, $84,000.
Let's go ahead and take a look and see what the starting equipment looks like for Farm 3. We have a Fent Vario 313 and a Favert 515C. We have the Top Liner 4090H Harvester paired up with the header and header trailer. We have a Brantner TA 23065-2 trailer. We have also a corn header, an eight row corn header for our harvester. We have the Servo 25 plow. We have the Raid EG39 cultivator. The Nord, Nord, sorry, Nordstein HK25 NS3030 seeder, as well as the Falcon 3 planter. We have a Brainer TA12050 power spread plus manure spreader. We have the XB150 Hauer front loader arms. And then we have a fork with grapple, power fork, and universal bucket for those front loader arms. And we have a 600 kilogram front weight. With respect to animals, we also have a cow shed and a small pigsty for the third farm. Hold on. Here we go. For the fourth farm. That is going to be kind of the contractor area, as I mentioned earlier. That is going to be located here at Farmland ID 82. And we also technically have the Farmland ID 89. That is also part of the contractor area. As you can see, we have vehicles at both of those locations. As far as our starting fleet for Farm 4, we have the John Deere 7810, a pair of those. We have a large tractor. We have the 8RT410, the 8R280, and the 7R270. We have a pair of harvesters and a giant here T560s. We then also have two grain header at the 625X grain headers. And we have then a pair of header trailers in the Nardi N40BX. We have the John Deere 9700 forage harvester that is going to be paired off the 3090, 390 plus forage header. The Manitou MLT840 telehandler. And for our telehandler, we have a pallet fork and bale fork. We also have a big body 750S trailer. And then a pair of Rudolph DK280RL trailers. We have the Bergman GTW330 auger wagon. We have the Titan 18 plow, as well as the Prolander 7500 cultivator. We have the Kinsey Mock Till 261 disc harrow. We have the Vanderstand Rapid A800S Cedar. We have the Optimal RS Planter. We have the Amazon ZGTS 10001 Fertilized Spreader. Then we have 1,800 kilogram, 1,150, 900, and 900 kilogram front weights. With respect to the contractor area, it does not have any animals. We move on to the fifth farm. And we're going to find the fifth farm located up here to the north at Farmland ID 96. And then, with respect to our starting fleet with the fifth farm, we have the Fent Vario 311 and the Fabric 515C. We have the top liner 4090H harvester with the 4090H header and header trailer. We have a pair of Welger DK-115 trailers. We also have an eight-row corn header. We have the POV-5XL plow, as well as the Torino 3FX cultivator. We have the Nordstein HK-25 NS3030 seeder, as well as the Falcon 3 planter. We have the Impress 125F Pro baler. We have the Hauer XB-150 front loader arms. For the front loader arms, we have a bucket round fork, round bale fork, and a manure fork. Then we have a 650 kilogram front weight. With respect to our animals, we have a cow barn and a small pigsty for that particular farm. Moving on to the sixth predefined farm. We're going to find that right here to the west of the fifth farm, farmland ID 97. Okay. And as far as starting fleet for that particular farm, we have the Massey Ferguson 5S small tractor, the Welger DK-115 trailer. We have the GMD-4411 side mower with the Alpine Hit 4F4H tether 
as well as the Boss Alpine 251 Forage Wagon. We have the Massey First in 1840 Small Square Baler, the Q3M Front Loader, and for the front loader arms, we have a pallet fork and universal bucket, and then a 1,100 kilogram front weight. With respect to animals, we have a sheep barn and a chicken coop shed and silo. This particular farm also includes a tailor, I believe. And then the last predefined farm is going to be located right here. And let's tab up to it. And we're going to find it just north of these other farms at Farmland ID 112. And this is going to be kind of set up as our forester. And as far as starting fleet goes there, well, we have the Steyr 8150 medium small tractor. Sorry, the John Deere U, our XUV 865M Gator. We have the 144ND log trailer as well as the Pinroth SF900. This is going to be a uh, stump grinder. Then we have an, a 1,000 kilogram front weight. We do not have a chainsaw. I was just checking to see if we had a chainsaw. We do not have a chainsaw up here. And we also do not have any animals for that farm. So as you can see, if you are going to be playing in multiplayer, we do have seven predefined farms set up. They all start with distinctive starting machinery, and they also have distinctive starting values. Now, the values that you're seeing here represent us already buying the land for which the vehicles are sitting on. And then we're, we're going to have a little bit of, sorry, we're going to have a little bit of money left over in order to buy farmland in order to start our operation. But again, only load the multiplayer variant of this map up. If you're going to be putting this map on a dedicated multiplayer server, or you're going to be hosting a local multiplayer session that other people can join. Now that we're back in single player, I went ahead and bought all of the kind of various other farm areas and other areas of interest that I want to show off. And I think I'm going to try something a little bit different for this particular video. At this point in the map tour, we would typically go and either do a farm tour where we go around the various farm buildings and see what is available at the starting farm. Or we would go ahead and kind of jump to, let's say, an aerial flyover. And instead of doing either of those things, I thought let's do farm tours. But instead, let's do all the farm tours back to back to back to back to back to back to back. So we're going to try to do these farm tours in order that they are in multiplayer farm one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, as well as maybe hit a couple other areas. And then we'll do our flyover. Then we'll come back to our shop. We'll jump in the Mahindra and we'll skip the farms and we'll just drive around to the cell points. And I'll get your all's feedback on if you liked that particular order uh, better than just kind of taking a look at the main starting farm and then hitting the secondary farms as we got around to them in the flyover or drive around portion. So here at kind of the starting farm in single player or farm one in the multiplayer variant, we have our farmhouse where we have our sleep trigger and we have our wardrobe trigger. Just behind, beside that, sorry, we have our silo dump and fill pipes. Then we have some storage going on here. We have our cow building. So we have our sleep trigger, or no, sleep trigger, our straw trigger located right here. We have our slurry point. Within here, we have our food trough. That's where our mixer is located. We have our milk trigger as well as our cow delivery trigger. And we're going to be able to hold 45 cows in this facility. Up 
under the tunnel, we have our fuel trailer. We have a seed silo that has 5,000 liters worth of seed. We have our manure heap. And then over here we have, I believe this is a secondary grain silo. I may be mistaken. Would not be that big of a surprise because we've got a whole lot, a whole lot going on. I'm trying to keep a whole lot in the top of my head at this point. Then up here we have a nice area where we can store bales. And we can dump them right down here into our mixer or right into the food trigger if we wanted to do it that way. We got some more storage going on. And then we kind of have the modern part of the starting farm back here in the back. A more of a modern shed. We do have some hay bales. We have some silage bales over here. We've got some other bales scattered around. And I will tell you that I did go around to each of the seven farms and I did try to sell everything on all of the various farm areas. That's why I took so long to do my initial assessment of this map before even starting doing the recording. I can tell you that everything starts out very, very well with respect to the first couple farms. You can pretty much sell everything that is at the first few farms. But then things start to go downhill a little bit as we move up the number of farms list. Uh, it starts out with just kind of one little simple shed we can't be sold. And then by the time we get all the way up to our seventh farm, well, it just becomes a whole heap load of decorative objects and other things that we cannot sell. And I think, I think, and it's no fault by the map holder, I think it's just it kind of starts getting maybe a little tiresome encoding all that stuff and checking it and quite possibly they they checked a few of those and then didn't get back to checking the rest or maybe certain farms were coded by certain people and uh, they just coded them a little bit different we have a water trigger here at the first farm we have storage for our front loader tools Located inside of there, we do have a washer and some more storage. And that is pretty much the first farm. Moving on to the second farm, which is going to be located right here. Kind of just down the road in town from the first joint. So we have, once again, we have our sleep trigger. We have our wardrobe trigger. We have a chicken coop of 360 chickens. We have our egg spawn point. We have our food trigger. Lovely mark there. We have our buddy from lots of Polish maps hanging around with his cat. If you've been around a channel for a while, FS17, FS19, well, this guy, he gets around, let's just say. He gets around. Oh, I really don't know what that is. A marker for. We have a fuel tank. Stored within here. And this particular farm also has some beehives. Oh, that, that's going to be our honey spawn point, I bet. That's what that is.
If we waited a little bit longer, we probably would have had some honey spawn in there. I think that is pretty much the second farm located right here. Then we move on to the third farm. It's just kind of just catty cornered from the second. We have once again our sleep and wardrobe trigger. We have a milk and food trigger for, I believe our pigs. 15 pigs in this facility. Then we have our slurry point. It's gonna be our milk point, no doubt, because we can hold 30 cows over here. With our food dump. Hold on right there. Well, I hope those cows aren't stuck inside all the time. We have our slurry for our cows. Some more nice storage. So around the back we have our manure heap. And then I am suspecting One of these might magically hold our silo. Looky here, looky here. Dump and fill pipe. Some more storage around back. And remember, we're not seeing any equipment in single player because we don't have that equipment available to us. We do have to get that equipment in a multiplayer. Now moving over here to the contractor yard in a multiplayer. And this is where it starts to fall a little bit apart with respect to selling buildings and such. Like we can sell this building all fine and dandy, but what we can't sell are the blowers and the ducting out the back. Some of these decorative items are also going to remain and then this contractor building is just immaculately decorated. Really well done. Guess I'm gonna have to go in maybe another entrance. And the reason why it's really well done is because I sold this building and all of the decorative items here within this area, they, well, they all stayed around. So that's how I know that, uh, yeah. Oh, there's a guy in there. Can we go inside? That's how I know uh, it is all immaculately decorated because all of that stuff stays around even when you sell the building, right? And the second area of the contractor yard is on the other side of our vehicle shop, which is below. And that is right here. So in multiplayer, this is where our harvesters are set up as well as other things. Then we have a far large farm silo for the contractor yard located right here. Lots of other storages. We have herbicide, fertilizer, and liquid fertilizer and solid fertilizer there. Storage silos. 
And all this would be associated with the contractor yard. This is kind of neat. Now, let's make our way north super fast. Looks like we've got some flurry storage tanks down there. Hard to believe the way this map is laid out that this is a single or this is a standard size map. And the reason I know this is if we go all the way over here to the far eastern edge, we're going to see down in the mini map the coordinates are going to go to about 2048. No higher than 2048. So we're at 2039. If this was a 4X map, they would go up to 4096. Double of 2048. That would, di that would then dictate that this map was two maps wide and two maps all tall because 2048 by 2048 is the extreme southeast corner of a standard size map. So here we have the sixth farm that is available in multiplayer. Or in single player, this is yet another possible starting location if you sold the land. So we have our sleep trigger, we have our wardrobe trigger. We have some nice storage going on. We have our silo dump and fill point. We have a cow area for 30 cows. Inside we have our food trough. We have our milk trigger here. We have our slurry point around the back. We have our silo dump and fill. Sorry, this is our fermenting silo. So we did have a fermenting silo in the productions. That's up here at farm six. There are 20 productions built into the map, by the way. We'll talk a bit about those in a little bit. We have our silage bunker. Lots of storage options going on here, right? Lots of storage options. Now, as we progress up here, we are getting into areas where a substantial part of these maps are not for sale. So I had to chuckle a little bit of that. So that is just a little bit of a word of warning. But you may not be all that concerned about selling some of these kind of specialized areas. 15 sheep in here. We've already seen this building before. We have our food and water on the outside. We have our slurry point. And then here we have a service bay. Now let's make our way to the sixth. I guess that was the fifth. This is six. We have our sleep trigger here. We have a maintenance trigger with the trigger marker out here. This is gonna be the wool factory in the Northern farm. So we're gonna bring wool and make fabric here. Now note this production, okay? Let's go ahead and pull this up. It's gonna be rather limited with respect to the other spinnery. There's actually two spinneries on this map. There's a Northern spinnery and a southern spinnery. The southern spinnery is going to produce much, much faster than the northern spinnery. So even though this is named Wool Factory, the spinnery to the south is going to produce faster. So we have our 
spawn point there. We have our dump point around the back. We also have a sheep area here. 75 sheep. We have our food. We have our eggs. And inside, we have our egg or chicken area. 360 chickens. And then we have our silo dump and fill point. Now let's move up to what is set up as the... Oh. Oh, I hope everybody's okay. So this is the forestry yard in multiplayer. We have our wardrobe trigger. We have our sleep trigger upstairs. And we have just a three bay garage shed. And then of course we have our forest right there. Now an area that we do not have a predefined farm at in multiplayer is the pig fattening area. And that's gonna be located right here. And this area is a little interesting to say the least. It's as if this whole area is under construction. And we have old buildings and we have new buildings. And we have very old building textures all throughout this upper area. Right next to very, very nice textures and it really does make things stand out. It's an interesting concept, but I just, yeah. I'm not a fan of this old, 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 like super old farm sim texturing going on here. It's right next to this super old low res texturing. We then have nice modern buildings and they really do tend to contrast significantly. So up here we have a construction pig site fattening lime cement dump point. I'm not sure what that is, honestly. It's like it's a cell point. Right, right here, okay. We have really nice, really nice clarity on our wooden pallets, right? And then we have right behind it, uh, blurry, right? So yeah, it's just, there's, there's gotta be newer buildings that we could use here. Just, just has to be. So we have three pig areas, all the same, 200 pigs each. We have our slurry for those. We have a fuel point over here. It's got 2,000 liters of fuel in it. Then on the other side of each of these buildings, we have our dump point for food. We have a point for water. Well, you can see what I mean by kind of like this is a construction here. We have three old pig barns and it's like they're building out some new ones and they got this pipe, right? They're constructing, they're, they're digging and they're running it over to a big new kind of slurry tank, liquid manure tank. And then that is going to then be a dump point probably to sell slurry. And here we have a manure heap. So yeah, it's kind of an interesting area. 
So with that, let's go ahead and I guess we'll pick up an aerial tour right from here. So we are in the north, kind of the northeast area of the map. We have our pig fattening area. Here we have several cell points. We have our sugar mill. We have our animal dealer. We have a grocery store cell point. Then we have a just a massive array of triggers here. That's one of our farms. Right, we have another one of our farms over there. And then up here, we have a area. Let's go over here to the northwest side of the map. This is kind of the industrial area. Here we have a nice area for some grapes, some grapevines. Interesting layout with this. Hopefully these uh, hopefully these vines are laid out in such a way that you can, you can maneuver the harvester around. We have our great processing factory there. So while we're making our way over to the industrial yard, we have 20 production built into this map. Four small greenhouses. We have cabinetry making, which is really a carpentry shop. We have two spinneries. We have a sawmill, the fermenting silo, which we saw at one of the farms. We have a VGA. We have lime production. We have a cement plant. We have dairy, oil, grain, grape processing. And we have a sugar mill. We have a bakery, we have a tailor, and we have a pallet warehouse. In addition to that, we have two plots that are construction sites. This one here, which we can sell the various things, buy the land, and then make use of it. Here we have our pallet warehouse. And this is a mod that is in the Giants Mod Hub. That's kind of interesting. We have to go inside. I had a hard time getting inside here earlier. Did buy it, did I not? Yeah, I bought it. So when we get inside, we'll just kind of forego this for now, maybe. There we go. When we get inside, we have our dump point. And then we have our interactive point inside of here. And you can see basically it accepts all types of things and then outputs all the same things as well. So it's a good place to store additional things if you're looking to just kind of get them out of the pallet count, the pallet limit. We have our grain mill. We have our sugar factory here. We have some cell points. We have our concrete production up here, our dairy. Here we have the solar yard that I mentioned you could buy for $200,000. Sure hope that it gives you some nice profits. You see we got quite the development going on, quite the construction areas. And then over here we have the lime mine. And down here at the bottom of the lime mine, we have our... Oh, sorry, that's not our lime mine. Lime mine is over here. This is an interesting... Uh, well, this is the Elm Creek Cave. That he can wander down through. Here we have the lime production. And we have over here kind of a, a whole pile of lime already out here. You will need to own the land in order to make use of it. Over here we have a heap pile of stone that you can use to collect for your lime production or your cement production okay we have what looks like a another sheep farm here may have missed earlier indeed it is something I think these are horses not sheep they are indeed sheep 150 sheep are available here and that is a farmland id 78 so we have our food we have our wool we have our sheeps
And we're making our way over here. This is the starting farm. There is a chicken coop on the hill here that we avoided. Guess we should go ahead and check that out. 360 chickens up here on the hill for the starting farm. Eggs and food. Now we've got our village in here. We do have a couple horse areas going on. Here we have our cabinetry maker. We have a horse area here. I believe I bought. Yeah. So we have our food point. We have a horse drop point over here. Eight horses going on in there. Some more cell points. We have our more industrial, faster production spinnery below. We have a horse riding area right there. All right, we've got some additional farms over here, kind of in town. Our industrial yard. We have two cow areas located right below here. These are not tied to any one particular farm. 92 cows in that building. I think they're matched. All right, so we have our food trough. We have our milk trigger. We have a silage bunker. Two silage bunkers to be exact. We have our slurry point. And again, another 92 cows there. But the same triggers going on. We have a BGA around behind that. BGA has three pull through bunkers and the BGA itself. Now I will tell you, if you own the biogas plant, you can sell $850,000, okay? You can sell the biogas plant, but big caveat. This, this thing here, this bridge, this bridge with this pipe over here to these tanks it's going to stay you can sell the BGA itself but the bridge stays this little secondary old platform stays a lot of this decorative items stay so while you could sell it it's likely not really worth your time to sell it because you are going to be somewhat restricted then of what you can do in this area because of the things that are going to remain. So let's go back over here to our vehicle shop. Let's grab our Mahindra and do our drive around and check out some other cell points and other points of interest. I like these little decorative decorations over here this says it's owned by me can we get in it can we get in it that's the question we cannot we cannot enter it we do have access to the forklift but this other stuff says it's ours but no nope, we can't we can't do it ah it's a little sad a little lonely we can't get into those they are just decorative. We have our dealer trigger here around the back with our corner markers. Nice to see that. And we saw our Mahindra around here on the front. So a decent area for our vehicles to spawn in at here. A little narrow getting out of here and given the size of some of these fields right you might be wanting to buy some fairly large vehicles so just kind of kind of be forewarned on that right behind the dealer we have the sawmill So we have an interactive icon at the front door. We 
progress further through the facility. Kind of tight getting through here. We got to navigate that to finally get back here to sell our logs. Wow. That looks pretty rough. Now remember we had a modded log fork? Indeed we do. Indeed we do. So we also have the ability to make use of this class front loader. We have our output for our wood chips. And I'm looking, 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 looking for our pallet spawn point for our planks. And I will admit, I don't see it. Maybe I am being a little blind. We'll keep looking here. But I'm not seeing it. So I can't really tell you where our pallets are going to spawn at. We're just going to have to own this particular facility. And see where they show up. I think we're good with respect to coming over here and taking a look at the constructor yard. We kind of already talked about those. We have our silo or fuel point. We have the three liquid fertilizer, solid fertilizer, and herbicide storage silos. Take this small road. And here we have a cell point, a building site cell point. And then over here where we thought we had maybe slurry storage, this is a sewer treatment plant cell point. Kind of an interesting design. Well, it looks more like a fill point than a cell point. So we're going to be able to buy treated sewage to put on our on our fields. It looks like. Saw a pile of manure back there. I don't know if it's decorative or if quite possibly it's just available for pickup. Here, this is our starting point. So that's where our wanted poster is for the uh, various collectibles. Make our way around. We have a couple more beehives that were associated with that additional farm. If you remember, farm that's over there. So, with respect to our scoring, we are giving the map a full point on production being built in or areas set aside for such. We're also going to be giving the map a full point with respect to product or the ability to sell our base game production items, crops, and animal outputs. As while we do have cotton and sugar cane removed, we do have the ability to sell everything that we could possibly grow on the map. Really interesting details set up here. Lots of details going on. 
Lots of cool stuff going on here. Multiple levels, multiple layers to the village. Pretty narrow getting in and around things. So ideal for small vehicles. find that ah right there she is so hidden back in here we have a cell point and these are farms that we've had we have our pizzeria down that road We'll go ahead and uh, take a look at our um, our build mode here in a little bit. Just kind of realizing we hadn't looked at build mode yet. There are lots of paintable ground textures as well. Ah, Mr. and Mrs. Bale getting married. That's cute. So we have our pizzeria. Alright, I'm point there. Can I sneak out of here? Indeed, we could. And that's slipping us back to our second farm. So we go this direction. Come back here to our spinnery. So we have a water fill point. Then we have our spinnery. So we have our dump point, we have our wool spawn point, and we have our interactive point here on the side. Base game spinnery. Now this southern spinnery, as I mentioned, does produce wool faster than the northern spinnery. Very important to make note of that. If you are looking to get into some more heavy duty wool production. Back here we have the horse area that we saw from the flyover. Then we have our joinery our cabinet maker we have a dump point we have our wood cell trigger we have our interactive icon here and the cabinet maker it's just going to make furniture in planks that's about it and then we have our spawn point for our pallet over here at this door Right next door to the horse area, we do have a horse riding facility that is located here. So you can bring your horses over here to do some inside training.
Pretty neat. Now let's make our way off to the north. If I can't find a road going north. We will have to drive through the forest. Find a road. Here we are on the back of our starting farm. I think this is going to take us up to the uh, sheep area that we saw. Yep, there's our sheep area we saw. We also have a water point here kind of water purchase I'm gonna try to make our way over to the lime production oh that's neat that's kind of neat down in here really an interesting and well detailed map I can see I can see maybe why it uh, was not released for the lower gen consoles now with respect to the farms being customizable we're gonna have to knock off some points because when we get up there to the upper levels of the farms and multiplayer we do end up where we have a fair number of farms that just do not have really good customization here we have a really cool like maze area so we can come in here and walk the maze or we can kind of go up the up here kind of look at the maze from above maybe get like kind of the the quick the quick route a fun little kind of little setup Yeah, we made our way. Hopefully out of this darn mess. There. It's that cute little fun area. Cute little fun area. And over to our right, from this area we have kind of that not lime mine but there we have the the Elm Creek kind of cavern down in there you can go and explore I did kind of walk through there that I didn't really see any collectibles hidden down in there here we have Kind of a pool coming from the lime facility. It 
So we have fuel over here. Looks like we have a maintenance trigger inside of the shed for repairs and such. So here we have the lime production. We have our interactive icon, we have our dump, and we have our fill point. And this is a little customized, so I want to go ahead and buy this and show it to you. $73,000 to buy. And from here we have stones and water is going to make lime. Okay, stones and water to make lime. We have an interesting little setup here. And then down in here we have a whole a whole refuse of lime already mined and processed but you will have to buy this area to then make use of it and this area also includes this pit over here and this pit over here was where we had all those stones so we can come and collect our stones, take them up into here and process and make lime. Once we buy this facility, we have free access to this lime that's already been produced as well. Let's go out this other way. We may have some lime also uh, piled up there. By our maze. And we'll make our way, wind our way through the evergreen forest. Really nice forest. I like this setup. Rocks are cool. The ground area here is cool with these little sticks and such. Kind of wetlands over here. Nice, neat little, neat little areas. Tucked away in the map. And we're about to emerge right at the base of that large grape area. Here we are. Oh, I kind of like when you come out of a forest and suddenly it opens up and like, oh, look, there's civilization. We got grapes on either side of us here. We have our grape processing. So we have our dump point, we have our pallets and our interactive icon. A storage building for have our grape equipment going on here. And we can buy this whole area for three hundred and forty five thousand dollars now let's turn around and maybe make our way to the industrial area which is over here in the northwest Now, I know this video is massive, but there's, there's like I said, there's like, it's just insane what's going on here. What's going on on this map is just a whole new level of, of insane. It's kind of cool how this is solved under construction like they're building out a new road 
they got a bridge here. They're building out like an interstate or a road up above. We have our solar yard I talked about that is viable. Over here we have... There's no entrance, but... We're going to go in anyway. I believe this is our concrete production facility. And with all this construction going on, right, we're going to need a lot of that. So we have our dump point. We have our pallet spawn point here. We have our interactive point, and then we have another... dump point here in the middle. Let's go and talk about what is available here at this facility. Yep, cement plant. So our cement plant, we're going to need stones, lime, and water to make cement bags. So really, it's going to benefit you to own the lime production first. And then you can take the stones and the lime that you produce over at the lime production add some water and bring it over here and make some cement. Pretty neat. Pretty neat seeing these custom productions with custom building setups. We haven't seen a fuel depot yet. Well, I hope you don't run out of fuel because you got to run all the way up here to the northwest to get it. We also have a maintenance bay here. And that is a cell point over there, I believe, for our diesel or fuel oil, motor oil that we can produce at our oil mill, which is coming up. We have our dairy giant jug of milk up there. We got solar panel. And here we're able to produce some custom dairy products, $70,000 to buy. We have our butter, cheese, and our milk, which is normal. Then we can make chocolate milk pallets, which is going to be milk, sugar, and chocolate. Strawberry milk, milk, sugar, and strawberries. Milk pallets, sugar, and milk. And that is our custom dairy. And we have our dump and pallets around the back. We have a construction site over here on the right, and if we buy it, we can kind of clear this land and clear the fencing. Here we have our flour mill. So we have our dump point, we have our interactive point, and we have our out spawn point across the street we have our oil factory we have our dump and we have our pallet point and let's go ahead and buy this because this is also custom we can make motor oil so we can make our normal sunflower canola and olive oil then we can take and combine sunflower and canola oil and make four barrels of engine oil. Or we can take just canola oil and make engine oil out of that. Kind of an interesting concept. Let's move on to a massive cell yard. Lots of stuff going on here. So let's just click through some of these. So we have point of sale for Agri LB. We have point of sale B for hay and straw. We have a stainless steel fertilizer tank to buy product from. We have a liquid fertilizer buy product. We have a lime station byproduct. We have potato cell point. We have a sugar beet cell point. We have agri bee lining. That is going to be a buy point. Then we have our gas station. 
So we have fuel there. We have various cell points scattered around here. Lime by point. And we have our sugar beet and potato cell points within the sheds. And I want to see what we can do here. We can buy wheat, barley, oat, canola, sorghum, sunflower, soybeans, corn, potatoes, sugar beet, mixed rations, grass, straw, pig food, back to wheat. So we can buy lots of products here as well. And that's just what our Mahindra would hold. So over here we have our construction zone again. We can buy the land, clear that out. We have our pallet warehouse here as well. And that is kind of the industrial zone. One more village to get to. Not a lot that we haven't talked about over here at the other village, so it's not near as much as it looks because we did kind of go ahead and go around all the other farms while we were at it. Ah, oh, look at that. Look at that. That's beautiful. So, we talked about farm customization, given a half point there. We talked about production, we talked about cell points. Buildings where appropriate are using the new texturing technique. I'm going to go with a half a point. And maybe it's being a little jaded because of those buildings up at the pig fattening yard. Maybe, maybe it's being a little jaded by that because there was just so many of them. Um, but really, it, it just, it just, I don't know. I don't know. So we've got one of our farms down here below. I think, I think I'm over one farmyard too many. I need to go further down the street. So kind of on the fence on that. Half a point, three quarters of a point. Here we have a workshop. Workshop trigger around the back. You can see here. Then we got coming up, we have then the farm. We have our bakery. We have a restaurant in the cell point. We have our grocery store. We have our sugar mill, our animal dealer. And that is going to be about it. So, yeah, I'm a little on the fence on that. Uh, but then, like, you know, here we have low ball and textures next to a uh, little better ball and textures next to our ground textures. And I mentioned I was going to look at build mode, but I never got around to it. So let's go ahead and cover that. We were trying to get to so many other things going on here. Since this map has so many required mods, there's going to be a ton of stuff available in sheds. A ton of stuff is going to be available in silos as well. We got a couple things scattered around through containers, farmhouses, and such. We've got some things with respect to production going on here that is just a part of various building packs. Selling points, greenhouses, orchards, and generators are all fairly standard. These are incorporated in the map, but I just don't know why they're kind of unique as opposed to those. We do have lots of custom animal pins because, again, they are a part of all of those required mods. And then as far as decoration goes, we've got a ton of additional deco because the map has a lot of Alien Gems kind of deco packs. With respect to ground textures, 
they do have a fair bit of paintable ground textures. Let's try to get over here to a farm where we can maybe paint some of those down. So we have asphalt. We have another form of asphalt. We have concrete, which is kind of like plate concrete. We have another form of concrete here. We have asphalt, but that's kind of like decorative stones, decorative bricks. More decorative bricks kind of going on. More decorative bricks. More of those bricks. We've got kind of brick pavers there. We have dirt. We have what I call lattice work. We have more dirt. Kind of more like sand going on. We have kind of stones. Stone pavers. We have animal mud. Concrete. More flavors of dirt. Forest ground. Grass. Dry grass. Gravel. Then we have some stone. Right. Other than that, we have fairly standard trees and very standard plants. So pretty much any ground texture that we have here on the map, we can place down and paint down as well, which I know lots of players like because if they are making customizations, making modifications, changes to the farmyards, they like to be able to blend in those textures a lot easier. So here we have our bakery, we have our interactive icon. Then around the back, we're gonna have our dump point and pallet points. So the last few points of interest are coming up. Let's go ahead and talk about our last scoring metric. And that is going to be player in interactive areas being clearly marked. And I am kind of doing my very best to remember as best as I can the map from the start. Trust me, it's a little hard at this moment I don't recall really saying I'm not really sure where something is other than the plank spawn point for our sawmill correct me if I'm wrong but I think that is and quite frankly I know you will correct me if I'm wrong because you don't take any exception doing that so I think that is the only thing that we really couldn't properly identify. So let's go ahead and give the map three quarters of a point there. And that's going to give this map a score of 3.75 out of 5. Could go up to a 4 if you feel that maybe oh, it's being a little bit too harsh with respect to the building textures and such and would like to give the map a little bit extra bonus there. But uh, that's what we're looking at. So we have our sell point for our grocery. And folks, that's going to get it done for Bergen Land District. A massive, massive map. Not from complexity, not from map size, but just what's going on. There's just so much going on. So many variants in potential gameplay as well because we do have the variants of single player or multiplayer how this is set up. So we do have our sugar mill here. Dump point. Pallet point. Interactive point. We have our animal dealer right there and our animal dealer trigger as well. Animal dealer. Lots of possible farms for you to make use of. There's our cell point. Uh, in single player. And then the ability to boot this up in multiplayer and have seven farms already pre configured is a pretty cool and, quite frankly, unique setup. 
So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. What do you think of Bergenland District? Are you going to be playing the map in single player? Are you going to be playing the map in multiplayer? What do you think of maps having a, a distinctive multiplayer setup and a single player setup? I think it's kind of unique. We don't see that too terrible often. We definitely don't, I don't see that too terrible often with respect to a map that is on the Giants Mod Hub that is also cross-play compatible. I definitely have seen this before on PC only maps, typically 4X maps when we do see it that way. Yeah, lots of interesting and unique things going on here with respect to this particular map. I'm gonna see real quick if I can make it way down the interstate. 